Hi everybody, my name is Pam Martinez, and I'm here to speak to you today around facilitating a meeting more effectively. I've been a leader most of my career and spent the last year, eight years, at Humana. Five of those years, I was a leader of, of, a, of a team of about 15 people, and the last three years, I've been in a consultant role where I do conduct, conduct meetings. At times, I've needed a better approach with my team to conduct meetings or with just facilitating a meeting to reach and build agreements. So today I'm going to give you one of those tools that I have learned. So in every meeting or discussion, there are ways to gather uh, needed information from the participants and make decisions in a methodical way, which will help keep the participants engaged throughout your entire process. Me these meetings are a, a series of discussions where there are some stages, opening, narrowing, and closing, uh, where you have different topics, you build and reach agreements along the way. The learning goal for today so we'll have, is to have a better understanding of those three tools of open, narrow, and closed stages, which is where you try and reach an agreement and an understanding when conducting meetings where you need to brainstorm an issue, evaluate your options, and then select that best option towards finding solutions and recommendations. Before we go ahead and get into the uh, different stages, one of the things that's important when facilitating any meeting but um, in particular, uh, uh, this type of a meeting, is to ensure that you have the right materials available. So you need to ensure that you have a training room to accommodate the number of participants, a dry erase board, which we have here, right where the presentation is, uh, a box of, or just some dry erase markers, which you can use on your board, a flip chart, and an easel if you need a flip chart. These are post-it flip charts that are on the wall. You'll also need to make sure that you have the right type of markers for the flip chart, which are not the same as dry erase markers. And then for these types of meetings, you'll need to have post-it notes, and then you'll also need to have some pens for your, for your participants to utilize throughout the meeting. Another one of the items that you need for uh, this type of a meeting is an engagement method. So the participants in this type of a meeting will brainstorm ideas by taking the sticky notes and, or post-it notes and utilizing them with their brainstorming ideas and then they'll place them up here on the wall. This will keep the ideas anonymous to begin with and uh, allow for easier dialogue when you're flushing those out. It allows for better engagement because then nobody's tied to, it, to a certain, certain item. So I'm going to go ahead and begin with the first goal and the first stage and the objectives of the goal. The first stage is called open stage. And this component involves um, interaction amongst participants. You want them to get their creative juices flows and flowing. You want them to brainstorm, and you want them to understand, um, have an understanding amongst the group, uh, the ideas and the values um, of what you're trying to achieve. So the first step that you would ask the participants to do is over here the objective of create, brainstorm, and gather information. Make sure that you let everybody in the room be very comfortable with the fact that there's no bad thoughts, no bad ideas. And then you ask them to take the sticky notes and uh, put their ideas up on the stickies and then come up and put them whoops, on the board here, on the wall. Okay. Once the participants make all that, that uh, these stickies, then you as a facilitator will go ahead and make the list over here on your flip chart of all the ideas that you've gathered from the post-it notes. The next objective in this goal is an understanding of the room. So you want to ensure that your audience understands each one of these ideas that you've taken from the post-it notes and you've, you've transferred them to the flip chart. You want to um, ensure that the audience is a, has a complete understanding and there can be open dialogue around explaining each of those ideas if you need more, um, if they need more information. Then the last objective is to check for agreement. This is a great test at the beginning of, of your session to uh, understand the level of agreement of the group without making any sort of decisions. Uh, people will tend to be vocal and, and tell you what they think. So this will give you kind of an idea of how the session will go. Then you review the pros and the cons of each of the lists on the idea list and um, 
to gain how close or how far, far apart they are to reaching consensus. The next stage is the narrow stage. And this uh, involves evaluating and organizing the information on, that you've gathered from the participants. Again, you're working now from your flip chart, and this promotes uh, open and uh, respectful discussion. And again, you're talking about the pros and cons and continuing your dialogue. So one of the first objectives here is to, re is to remove duplicate ideas. This is the beginning of condensing that list and an easy way to introduce uh, eliminating the, uh, the elimination process and again, engaging the participants within the room. The next stage and objective is reduce, combine, and prioritize. We use a process called the N over three process. And what that consists of is taking the number of ideas that you have, which in this case, I have nine ideas, and you divide that number by three. So nine divided by three equals three. This means each person in your room will have three votes and will use them on three different ideas. They may not put all three other votes on one idea. Your N over three process can be done as a hidden process by using, again, the post-its, or if the group is comfortable, they can speak um, freely and um, raise their hands. Before closing out the narrow stage, your last objective here is to abdicate, is abdicate. Anyone in the room can abdicate any one of the ideas, even after the voting, and even if you have one idea here that has nothing next to it, somebody in the room still might say, well, I put my three votes on something else, but I still feel passionate about this one as well. So you wanna make sure that anybody can abdicate. Again, you're building trust and, and bringing out everybody to let them know that their, that their values, that their opinions and values matter. You will do this before you move into the closed stage. The last stage, goal three, is the closed stage. And this stage involves the facilitator coming into play a little bit more and building to that agreement. As a facilitator, you're there to assist your participants to reach small agreements. It builds that firm foundation for collaborative action from your group in the room in selecting the best approach and then, and then reaching a final uh, agreement. You, as the facilitator, Will, be, will propose each idea on your list. This is to review and narrow each item right here, whether it should remain or be removed. Your goal and my goal as a facilitator is to always be neutral. So you always wanna ask very easy questions um, as to why someone would be opposed to removing the item and continue moving the participants to an agreement. Voting is used if the participants are ultimately unable to reach agreement, and this can be done again by show of hands or again using post-it notes if, if the people uh, and the participants feel more comfortable with that process. Your last objective here is to continue all of these by flushing out each item on your list until you reach a final conclusion. So, to wrap up what we've learned this afternoon is there are three stages that you must uh, facilitate through in an effective meeting. The open stage, which involves the interaction amongst the meeting participants, again, promotes that creative brainstorming and understanding amongst the group regarding all the ideas that have been placed up on the board. Again, the narrow stage is, is evaluating and organizing and doing the N over three process and promotes open discussion again about how, uh, what the pros and cons are of each idea. The closed stage involves you as a facilitator of uh, building agreement. You wanna assist the participants again, reaching those small agreements, builds a firm foundation for collaborative action, and it has the participants selecting the best approach and reaching that final agreement together. So today we have learned a really good approach. I find it to be something that is a valuable tool and I use it day in and day out in my work life today and have been able to build and reach some great um, uh, agreements within the participants of, of my meetings. Thank you for having me. Have a great rest of your day.